One, two, three. This is the Alpha Man Bubble, and this is a kind of combination of videos of a general aesthetic of going to Alpha Boot Camp. And there's like this like $18,000 price tag that's been floating around the internet. Now, whether or not that price tag is literally literal, it's the point of how many thousands of dollars do you spend for a program or course before it's a scam? And does it matter if it helps you? Like I say, and I always recommend read the religious books, even if it's not real. Like the Bible's not real, but read it. You could learn something from it. You know, it doesn't have to be real for it to be a, a real tool, right? So the alpha like camp bubble makes sense to my brain in some capacity. But then the $18,000 price tag is what makes people so upset. And then there was even some comments that I loved where it's like, these men will do anything but go to therapy. But here's the thing. In order to be a whole human being, you have to do a lot more than just therapy. You also have to have a philosophy understanding of the self. To have a philosophy understanding is your why, your morals, your ethics, your understanding of what what you're doing here and the why of what you do in your life. So for a lot of people, I think they go to these camps to figure out that part. Do I feel man enough? When I was younger, I wanted to feel my limitations. I wanted to know how much pain I could handle, how much struggle I could handle, how much suffering could I handle. But I often suffered unwisely. Uncle Iroh emojis in the chat, guys. Let's go. Life is about learning to suffer with wisdom, suffer wisely. And often when I look at the boot camp guys, I'm not convinced they're suffering wisely, but I can see why they made the decision to want to do this. So let's go ahead and check out some of the energy and then we'll have a discussion about it, okay? Three, 29, one, two, three, 30, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hold one, 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 in the air two. both hands. Like a bench press, like one, a bench press. Kill. 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 One, two, three, two. Okay, P.S., I'll tell you this story. When I was younger, I walked into a recruiter's office for the Air Force. I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to suffer wisely. I wanted to be a tough person. I wanted to prove myself. And then I realized uh, I couldn't just leave the military whenever I wanted. And my neurodivergency and sense of like, I don't know, call it PDA, call it whatever you want to call it. Like, I don't like being told what to do. And I just knew I was going to end up becoming issues. And I have four brothers who are in the military. So if I became the fifth, it would have made a lot of sense. Instead, I joined underground communities. And BDSM communities aren't about sex all the time. Some are, some are not. I joined the ones that had both options. And I primarily spent my time meditating and doing very interesting things using BDSM as a way to know myself. There was actually a retired military person in the dungeon who would waterboard you for a scene. So waterboarding is a form of torture. It's very bad. And people volunteer to do it just to test themselves in the group I was in. And frankly, I kind of get it. Now, I never did it. It would have been way too bad with all of my PTSD issues. But that is what people are seeking. They're seeking a challenge by going to these boot camps. They want to see their limitations. But I think often people suffer unwisely because they don't even know what they're doing there. They're thinking if I just go and I get tortured, I'm going to learn something about myself. But you have to know why you want to learn anything about yourself, right? You want to feel like you're getting closer to yourself. I remember when I first had a flogger hit my back or a fist hit my thigh or needles put inside of like anything that I've ever done. It always brought me closer to my body, my understanding of my limits. But more than that, my mindset going in was kind of key. So I often wonder when I look at these alpha bros, like what are they really looking for? And I think they are looking for their meaning and they're looking to prove themselves. It's interesting you feel like you have to spend $18,000 for a weekend of torture to prove yourself when you could just join the BDSM dungeon and it's like for free, bro. It's like a $20 entry fee and you just have to make friends, you know? So... But I get it because you associate BDSM with sex and you think it's hedonism and you think this is about structure and discipline. It's all about how you use the tool. It's all about how you use the tool. I like using BDSM for meditation and getting somewhere deeper with myself. Some people use it for orgasm. Both are great reasons to use it. This is validation-seeking behavior. This is validation-seeking behavior. This is I want to feel tough enough and good enough and I want to feel... Like I'm going to earn something, right? Earn something, maybe. I think if you go into something like this with the right meditative mindset, it could help. 
If you don't, though, and you think it's going to be the like the everything you've ever needed, it's not going to help. Right? Like, that's not going to help you. Oh. 60% you will not be. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Are you touching me? Are you touching me? Are you touching me? Get the fuck off me. Get the fuck off me. I'm not touching you. Little bitch. I'm not touching you. Fucking bitch. Oh, get in the fuck tub. Get in the tub. Every one of you. So, hey, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Sir, every one of you get in the tub. Get in the tub. Get in the tub. Shut up. Man, these guys are so skinny, bruh. I get it. It's kind of like you watch an anime and you're like, I want to train like Goku, bro. I want to train like Vegeta. I want to be tough. I want to do this. And some people need people yelling at them to do things. Other people don't. It's kind of interesting. I kind of get it. Like, I kind of get why they would want to do it. But also, Ripley says, LOL, kiss each other already. Bro, I got to tell you, every time I watch an anime and people are fighting and it's boys, I'm like, kiss. We've been watching also... um, uh, Physical 100. It's so good. It's so good. Physical 100 is a good example. When I watched Physical 100, I was like, I could do this. I could do, I could fight all of them and a bear, bro. I could do this. Obviously, I can't do it. These people are ath like literal athletes. They're gold medalists. Like a lot of them are trained, right? Firefighters and all of these people. But when I watch Physical 100, I'm like, I could do that. And it makes me want to do push-ups. Being like challenged like that, right? Being physically like you have to do this or you lose I I crave that so much I'm so competitive like I crave that but it's interesting how people decide to get that fulfilled these people chose camp I kind of like physical 100 but also some people do marathons some people do triathlons everybody finds a way to find discipline it's interesting how this is what they've decided to do there is no respect. Get in the tub. You are going home. Oh, no, you're not sit down. You're not going in the fucking water. They're all going in the water. They're all going in the water. You're fucking done. You're fucking done. Sixty percent. You will not be here on Friday. I will make sure of it. You are on the fucking right to be here on fucking Friday night. You know, you could just join the military. You could do something else. But it's interesting, isn't it? Interesting that they chose this. I will cut this fucking thing off my head before I let any one of you little bitches make it to that dinner table that don't fucking deserve if I can be here. I'll fucking make sure of it. I'm waiting out the fucking bitches. Six. Who are you? My name is Aiden. I am a man. It's so funny. It's I'm just we gotta watch that again. Who are you? My name is Aiden. I am a man. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, ice baths suck, bro. It's like I I'm a man. Okay, I know you all make fun of it because it doesn't seem like disciplined enough, but like there's so many ways to like meditate. No one's yelling at you, and you're still doing things that are tough, bro. You know, let let me let me tell you as a little girl. Growing up watching Kill Bill, did I fantasize over going through the boot camp that Bill Kill Bill puts her through? Yeah, absolutely. I was like, I could do this. Move over, Uma. I got this. Okay. Like now, obviously, I go toward more towards a meditative perspective on these things so I can suffer wisely. But obviously, there is a desire to suffer that humans have. It's just interesting to know what method you choose for that suffering and if it's going to actually bring you closer to wisdom or not. Uh, I'm a warrior. You're not really a warrior, though. It's interesting how they want to take on labels and titles that isn't accurate to them. You're not a warrior. That's not what a warrior is. I'm not a warrior. I mean, I could take a bear. Right now, I could take a bear and Andrew Tate at the same time for sure, bro. But I'm not a warrior. Isn't that interesting that those are the words they use? And that's what I mean. I don't think it's honest. I think the best way to be disciplined is in an honest way. It's honest. And this is, this doesn't feel honest. I'm Aiden. I'm a man of a warrior. This is it. We live here. This is where we live. This is where we live. This is what Sneeko dreams of. 
This is what Sneakle's like, yeah, I want this. I want to I want to suffer. Sneakle's like, I want to be a man. This isn't how you become a man, bro. Who are you? I think this is the kid camp too. There's like a kid camp and an adult camp. Let me break this down for you. Instructor Ray and I have had combat operations that have lasted longer than 75 hours. Do you understand? 75 hours of active combat. You guys are playing a fucking game. You paid to be here. This is for fun. This is for growth. That's true. That's true. You paid to be here. This is a game. This is not real suffering. That's kind of the key. You played, like you paid to play pretend. Which is kind of why BDSM is sort of similar. Like you, you are kind of, uh, uh, what's that called? LARPing. You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's a way to do it with wisdom. And I think you learn over time how to do it. That's what I saw my whole life. I was seeking ways to challenge my body and myself. And I did over time, I would have done something like this. Maybe not for this money. But I did get off on this. Like, I do get off on like trying to test myself a little bit, just like a little bit. And I learn different ways to do it now. And it's definitely in a, a very different way. But I, I definitely want to go towards my joy, right? So I'm absolutely positive this is a tool they're gaining from this. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. The question is, what is it? Zero says, what type of parent is willing to pay 18000 for boot camp? Just make your kid go to military school or ROTC. I think people think it's like lame and they want to feel cool doing something. It's like, put your kid in karate, bro. But then some people make karate into a cult too. And I think people sometimes need to do that to feel like it's important. I mean, heck, I even think in BDSM, you kind of got to take it really seriously for it to work, even though it's just like a placebo kind of, because you're still just LARPing. But I think that's a part of it, if I'm being honest. Like, you kind of have to go into these camps really LARPing very hard to actually, like, get what you need out of it. Like, if you try to meditate and you're like, oh, this is so dumb. Like, I'm not even going to do this. Like, oh, I'm just going to pretend I'm meditating. Then, yeah, all you'll ever get out of it is, is no benefit of meditating because you're not meditating. Like, sitting on a floor and closing your eyes and not talking is not meditation. Going to this camp and half-assing it, you're not going to get what you need out of anything. If you half-ass it, you're not going to get anything out of it. But you also want to feel cool doing it, which I think is part of the problem. And so you feel like if it's not cool, then maybe it's not good. It's like, it just, if it's going to help you, it's going to help you, dude. This ain't going to kill you. Well, Instructor Steve might kill you. Nobody's shooting at you. There's no fucking enemy. You know who the enemy is here? You! You're the fucking enemy! You're the adversary! Mm. And you're all worried about yourself. You want to finish this thing fucking strong? Stop worrying about yourself. Start worrying about the brother to your left and your right. So that's what I wanted to show you. Now, okay, again, it seems silly. We could make fun of it in so many ways. And I do think for a price tag of too much, whatever that is, for any of these camps, I don't know how much each one count. It, it costs. Some are 18000 some are 8000 some are this. It's a way to make money, and I think it makes sense. And honestly, if you're willing to spend your money on it, I think you should spend that money on it. I just think... Maybe it doesn't have to work this way. I think in life we all end up spending money on something that we learn wasn't for us and that's what you learn. That's the lesson you took from it is like, man, I'm not going to do this again. That's a good lesson to learn. But more than that, there might be a tool here for some kind of specific kind of brain that we're not seeing. When I say I meditate, not everyone likes that. Some people are like, that's so lame. I don't want to do that. I'm like, yeah, for sure, bro. I get it. Some people are like... Ew, even thinking about what is objective, like outside of like perception, space and time, people are like, that's so lame. Why are you even doing that? For sure, bro. It's not about them. What you do is helping you and that's the point. But then the proof is in the pudding as well. Is it leading towards your joy? I think a lot of these alpha bubbles, the reason they feel like so easy to make fun of is because it doesn't feel real. But that's also why the alpha bubbles look at the feminist bubbles and think like there's no way you believe that. Because everybody feels so performative. And I think everybody kind of is. I think no one's actually as happy as they pretend to be. And I think no one's as joyful as they think they, like, I don't think they're even aware they could be as joyful as they could be. I just think people are trying their best to feel good about what they've accomplished. Because also part of the feedback they're getting is like, you should feel grateful because look how successful you are. But the, even at the top, you don't feel that way. It's interesting with the recent um, Diddy news, P. Diddy news, you know, a lot of things about Justin Bieber have been coming out. And Justin Bieber has this song called Lonely. And he talks about how 
you know, he's at the top. He feels so lonely. No one's listening to him. Everyone's holding him accountable for being a stupid kid, but no one's asking him why he's acting out. And now, because allegedly there's a video of P. Diddy and Justin Bieber, and allegedly P. Diddy did stuff to Justin Bieber, and allegedly, 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 everyone is like, oh, it makes sense. I feel so bad for him. And that is what we do, right? We look at people and think like, you're at the top. You have money and girls. You should be happy. You're pretty. You're a model. Why the fuck are you sad? Because comparison really is the thief of joy. And that's why you have to decide, like, is this what is good for me? So sometimes these alpha bo- bros will look at the progressives and think, like, there's no way I'm. this is going to help me. I don't want this. And they're right. It's probably not for them. And the progressives look at the alpha boys and they're like, ew. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably not for you. Maybe it's just not about you. But also maybe this thing you're picking is also not for you or not for the view that's actually going to be the best version of you. Maybe it's just for the you that you are now. So if you want to spend 18K on an alpha camp, you do you. Do I think it's probably a mistake? I Who fucking cares? Okay, your mom was a mistake and here we are. Our case is everyone is brainwashed by social media to think your whole life is supposed to be sunshine, happy 100% of the time. I think... I think our boomer parents did that to us too. Even prior to social media, in my bubble growing up, you were basically never not allowed to be happy because you you had food, you had clothes, you had a roof over your head. Why the fuck are you ever, why are you even complaining? The bubble I grew up in allowed you to have normal sad emotions, but genuinely did not like complaining or any kind of like, I'm unhappy. I didn't love parts of my childhood. It's like, what are you complaining for? You never had to worry about bills. Your parents were responsible. I don't think it's social media. I think social media is a is a reflection of us as a whole. I think the world is a reflection of us as a whole. I think if you're really honest with ourselves, I don't even think our parents allowed us to ever feel like we, like they even made us feel like we were supposed to be happy 100% of the time. Even to this day, if I mention the word trauma, people like roll their eyes. That's them saying, I expect you to be a ho- happy 100% of the time. That's what that means. And so like I'm not going to blame social media. But I'm going to blame humanity for thinking it is other things. Actually, I'm not even going to blame anyone. Don't blame anyone. It's no one's fault. It's just what humans do. Everyone's just doing what they think is best. Everybody thinks they're the target minority. Everyone thinks everyone hates them. Everyone thinks their group is next. Everyone is afraid. It's us. Humans. It's us. We're the problem. It's not social media. We created social media. If you want to spend 18K on this, great. If you want to spend $250 an hour talking to a YouTuber, great. If you want to spend $100 going to church by tithing, great. If you want to spend money eating out and getting Uber Eats, great. Just ask yourself if it's leading you closer to your joy. And if it's not, don't do it. And if it is, keep doing it. It's not about us deciding these tools are good or bad or black and white. It's about asking ourselves, does this tool work for me as a person? But isn't that interesting? I saw people in the comments saying like, I can't wait to save up for this boot camp. I've been saving for years. I can't wait to do it. 18K on like a few days of a boot camp. That's such an interesting way to spend money. Now, this is also why I'm not too mad about capitalism sometimes because I really feel like if you're willing to spend that money, like, yeah, I spent a stupid amount of money last year, two years ago on something that I think ultimately probably wasn't like worth the money, but it taught me like a really good lesson. And I think that's really important to recognize is like, yeah, that exists for a reason because there are people who are willing to pay it. And I think you willing to pay it is like, you better learn the lesson of paying this bill. Now, most people might not learn it, which is kind of sad, but that is like humanity. That's the problem is like the people who are gonna learn the lesson are gonna be the change the world needs, I think, much more than the people who don't learn the lesson. Because if you're not going to learn the lesson, like you were never part of the population who was going to learn it anyways. So you're part of the population that keeps the cycle going. Because the cycle can't keep going without everyone's participation in the cycle. Like the majority decides how the cycle works, guys, not the minority. This illusion that the minorities are deciding like how things work Zero says what's worse is these guys could be bettering themselves by investing 18K rather than spending it on boot camp. 
Could you imagine if they took that 18K and put it into their Roth or put it into investments or put it into property or put it into education? That's what I'm saying. I'm either assuming these men are rich and have 18K to spend or they're not rich and this is the decision they've made. And honestly, I think they have the right to make this decision. I think they should make this decision so they can learn to either make it again or not make it again. The world is a reflection of us as a whole. And I get it. I get it. I do. I do. I get it. Like, I get why it happens. I get why people do it. There's really a hope. There's really a hope that, like, they'll find an answer there. And maybe they will. Maybe they will. You know?